Hello again and welcome back to my shop. A few days ago, I got a request from a lady over on Facebook to make two seam rippers. She wanted them made out of wood and she basically gave me the option to choose the type of wood that I used. And here's what I came up with. A beautiful chrome seam ripper done in olive wood and a gorgeous Coca-Bolo seam ripper done in gold. If you'd like to know how I made these, stick around and I'll show you. For my seam rippers, I chose a nice piece of Coca Bolo and a nice piece of olive wood from Bethlehem, Israel. Now, I've gone ahead and prepared these two blanks. You can see the brass tubes are already inserted in the blanks and the blanks have already been barrel trimmed. I have my blank chucked up on the lathe and the first thing I need to do is simply true it up. The next thing I want to do is, I kind of like my seam rippers to sort of have a little bit of a shape, a little fatter in the middle, a little thin you know, on either end, and then a, a kind of a knot on each end of the ripper, and that lets the person get a grip on it and really be able to push it into the work. So I'm going to find the center so I can make a con convex section here, and then I'm going to come back maybe a half of an inch on either end uh, and make a mark so that I can make a nice concave section uh, to give it a nice, kind of a nice shape. Okay, the blank is about eight centimeters long, so we're gonna go right to about four. And I think I'll come in about a centimeter here and a centimeter on this end. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Uh, I've got a little bit of cleanup to do right there, and that shouldn't be any problem. But other than that, I like the shape of the handle. It's nice. You get your hand behind there and push. So we just need to clean up the front and back end so that they meet with the bushings. I'm really happy with how this seam ripper is turning out. Absolutely love it. I got a couple of harsh marks right there and right there, uh, but I'll take those out with the sandpaper. I just had trouble. I think it probably was a sharpening issue on my tool. I probably needed to run it back across the grinder and sharpen it up a little bit, uh, but I had a little trouble working those corners. So I'll clean that up with some sandpaper and uh, we'll get this finished and assembled. Sanding only made this olive wood blank look better. It, this is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I cannot wait to apply the CA glue. Give me a couple of minutes. I'll put a couple coats of CA on here and you will see this grain just pop and come to life. Anytime that I sand a wooden blank, I always like to use a little denatured alcohol to clean that blank. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And it just, it takes all the dust off the blank and just kind of gives you a sneak peek of what it's going to look like. 
Now look at that. That is just amazing. And just look what one coat of CA glue does to olive wood. I've got about six coats of CA on my blank. It, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and I like to micro mesh. I'm going to micro mesh it and kind of uh, level it out in, in case there's any high areas. Um, and then I'll take a quick peek at it. And if it needs it, I may apply another coat or two. But uh, this is looking absolutely stellar. Blank's looking good. I think I'm going to apply one, maybe two more coats of CA uh, just to kind of uh, shine it up a little bit. Uh, and I think it'll be ready to assemble. That is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to buff it and I'm going to assemble it. Assembly of a seam ripper is very simple and does not require a pin press or any other tool. You've got these two little springs and you want them to slide into your tube to where the flat ends meet in the middle. Best way to do that is to kind of curl them up, roll them in your fingers a little bit so they're a little smaller than the hole and just slide them in the hole and press them all the way back. Now we'll put the other one in. Okay, then we'll slide, this is a stiletto end, slide that in, and here's our seam ripper, we'll slide that in, and we have got an absolutely stunning seam ripper in olive wood. You want to use it, you simply pull this out, flip it around, and you're ready to rip your stitches. You've got a nice grip there, nice ability to push uh, and take the stitches out. Flip it back over, it's ready for storage in your sewing kit. Here's your stiletto. This is used for when you sew two pieces of material into a corner uh, and you turn it right side out. You can use this to pick it out uh, to get your corner uh, all the way out. And that is one gorgeous seam ripper. Let's get that Coca-Bolo ripper turned now. Time now to turn the second seam ripper. I'm going to be making this one out of a gorgeous piece of Coca-Bolo. This is a Central American wood. It's absolutely beautiful. And the kit will be in gold. So let's get started. This piece of Coca Bolo is just phenomenal. I've got the shape I want, so I'm ready to start sanding, but I, I just am blown away at the grain in this piece of wood. It's absolutely gorgeous. OK, 
got my blank sanded. Now let's clean it up with a little denatured alcohol. There's a sneak peek of what that blank is going to look like when we get the CA glue on it. One thing that I want to point out with this Coca Bolo blank that you didn't see in the olive wood blank is all of these little voids in the wood. These voids, of course, are grain. And one thing we want to do is make sure that we get them filled with our CA glue so that we can level them. If we don't level them, then that'll be a place where dirt and grime can gather and it'll make the pin look bad before the finish actually wears out, which with the CA glue should be a long time. When I'm working with heavy grain, I like to drool on very heavily my CA glue for the first two or three coats. You can see how gorgeous that blank is. Just look at the shine after one coat. But I guarantee you, those little divots are still there. It's going to take probably five or six coats to fill those. Then we'll sand with the micro mesh to level everything out and put another couple of coats on there just to shine it back up. It should be dry by now, and it is. So let's go ahead and put another coat on. You might have noticed how as I worked the glue onto the blank, I moved very slowly. Normally you want to move quickly to avoid the glue sticking to your finger, but I use a piece of blue painter's tape and what that does, you can see where the glue stuck to the tape, but it keeps it off my finger. So I don't have the glue build up on my finger. Um, I'm not worried about peeling glue off or getting a glue burn, which CA glue will burn you very badly. So I use this method uh, to be able to apply the glue and I can work it a tiny bit slower than I normally would. It's very humid here today, so my glue is drying very quickly and I'm not having any trouble, so I'm not using any accelerator. As I put more coats on, the glue may begin to dry a little slower and if that's the case, I will use a little accelerator to help the process. I've got four coats of CA on my blank and I'm looking at it from the side, looking to see if I can find any voids in the wood. It looks pretty darn good to me. I'm going to go ahead and drill on one more heavy coat of CA and then we're going to go after it with the micro mesh pads. Right before I do the micro mesh, I am going to hit it with the accelerator, just a quick shot to make sure that it's not tacky at all because if there's any tack to the glue when you go after it with the micro mesh, it will just really destroy your blank. I've micro meshed the blank up to 12,000 grit. It looks fantastic. I'm going to put one top coat of CA on the blank just to kind of make it pop. And this last coat will go ahead and hit with some accelerator. Let's wipe the blank off a little bit in case there's any residue from the accelerator on it. And let's get a little bit of polish. Let's polish it up. Now we'll buff it off a little bit. you go look at that thing shine absolutely gorgeous all right let me get my parts and we'll get this uh, seam ripper assembled this particular seam ripper instead of having a stiletto actually has two rippers a large and a small it's going to get assembled the same way as the other one we're going to roll up one of the springs and we're going to insert the thick end or the end without the holes in it into the center of the seam ripper and flip it over. We're going to repeat with the other spring. Okay, and now we can insert the rippers. Whoops, got to be careful when you put them in because the, the large one will occasionally catch. Here's one last look at these two absolutely gorgeous seam rippers. If you liked my video today, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Better yet, leave me a comment. If you really liked my video, I would greatly appreciate you sharing it with your friends and family. If you are not already a subscriber, 
I invite you to subscribe to my channel. That way all my future videos will come directly to your YouTube inbox. I have a Facebook page. You can find me over on Facebook at RJB Woodturner. I invite you to join me over there. I do project updates as I'm working on things in my shop and I love interacting with everyone. Thank you so much for following me everybody. I truly appreciate your support in every way. I want you guys to have a great day. Get out in your shop and turn something and remember you are always welcome in my shop.